With the release of the GPT Store, OpenAI is taking incremental steps toward owning the generative AI space with UGC on AGC. What is UGC? What is AGC? And what does the GPT Store mean for you and I as engineers? That's what we're gonna break down in this video. Whenever new technology is released, great engineers ask themselves, is this worth my time? Is this worth your time? There are a million things that require your time and attention. Why should you pay attention to this? With the GPT store, it's pretty clear that it's a rough first draft. The search functionality is limited. Sometimes results don't load. There are errors all over the place. And most of these GPTs are thin wrappers around docs, right? Thin wrappers around some documentation that you would normally just go visit. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing special about that either. Throughout all the mess and the hype around the GPT store, there are three hyper compelling value propositions that GPTs offer you if you understand the macro and micro picture of the GPT store. And one of these three value adds has the potential to take your engineering and your products to the next level. So let's talk about this announcement post and how you can utilize this opportunity to improve your engineering tools and products. So from a macro perspective, there are four things that are absolutely clear. OpenAI is leading the AI race. OpenAI is building the next app store on top of GPTs. OpenAI is building an ecosystem that anyone can tap into, not just engineers. This is really important. We're going to circle back to this in a moment. OpenAI is taking smart, mid-sized, incremental steps toward owning the generative AI space with UGC on AGC. So we're going to talk about exactly what that means in a second here. But first, let's talk about how OpenAI is differentiating the GPT store from the Apple store. So in announcement posts, every sentence matters. If you've worked with or seen the marketing segment of companies, you know this is true. Every sentence matters. Every sentence is double and triple checked against the company's mission and the immediate business targets. I think one phrase from this post is very telling. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So. If we look for this, include your GPT in the store. Yeah, so if we look at this section here, include your GPT in the store. Building your own GPT is simple and doesn't require any coding skills. So what is the macro message here from OpenAI? They're building a platform open to anyone interested in using AI, not just engineers. So like, let's dig into that some more, right? From a business perspective, what does that mean? They're trying to open up their TAM, total addressable market. Us engineers, although we've grown in size as a group over the past you know, 10 years, we engineers make up a fraction of the population. By opening up the GPT store to everyone, they do something the Apple store could never do. The Apple store is constricted to engineers and not just any engineers, engineers that can code Objective-C, Swift, and React Native-like languages exclusively, right? GPTs, on the other hand, are making a big play. They're saying this doesn't require any coding skills. This is a big deal and it has implications, but I want to call this out and say a bigger pool isn't a better pool, which leads us to the advantage that you and I have here. True engineers and true professionals care about their craft. They understand the tools that they need to use to build the thing they're trying to build. If you're watching this channel, I'll bet you are one of these true engineers, one of these true professionals. And if you're not, you probably will be. This care and love of your craft leads you to build high quality products, tools, applications, and experiences. An app store for anyone to build on means there's going to be a hilarious amount of junk and useless GPTs. So this has three major implications, the last one being the most important for you. So it means there's gonna be more filtering work, right? We're gonna to have to shift through the bad GPTs, especially as OpenAI improves their search capabilities, adds tagging, et cetera. It also means though, great applications will stand out even more because there'll be a dime and a dozen and a sea of GPTs. So the great GPTs will likely rise to the top very quickly. And lastly, engineers have a explicit sizable advantage in building great 
GPTs. Again, if you've been with the channel, if you've been experimenting with GPTs, LLMs, and agents, you understand the limits, pros, and cons of what GPTs can do. And having that engineer's mindset in general of building something from the ground up, understanding the technology, understanding what these GPTs can do, is gonna give you a sizable advantage in building your GPT. So let's jump back to the last macro point. This is really important and it really affects everyone from the top down. OpenAI is taking smart, mid-size, incremental steps toward owning the generative AI space with UGC on AGC. So let's break this down, right? What is UGC? User-generated content. Think TikTok videos, think IG posts, think Reddit feed, think any feed that exists that users are creating. The users are the product. This was a brilliant innovation of the companies in the 2010s led by Facebook. They figured out we can let our users generate content for our users. We can manage their generated content, do less work, and then throw ads in between our user generated content, right? This is the model of the current web and you see it everywhere. UGC plays on the idea of the fundamental drive of human connectivity, right? We want to see what everyone else is doing. We want to connect with others. We want to be aware of what everyone's posting, sharing, and connecting on, right? That's UGC. Users are generating the content that drives the platform. But things are going to a new level with UGC on AGC. AGC, of course, is AI-generated content, sometimes referred to as AIGC. We're not quite at the point where we have true agentic systems auto-generating their own content. Follow the channel if you're interested in true agentic systems. The goal of this channel is to lead the journey toward becoming agentic engineers, a new role that builds systems that build systems. I'm betting my career on it, and all you have to do to join and learn is hit subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and it helps more engineers just like you stay close to the future of engineering as I spend tons and tons of my time and energy researching, experimenting, and pushing what we can do with this technology. So we're not quite there with these agentic systems, but it's coming. Right now, we need that human intervention, and OpenAI is pulling the most clutch business move by combining UGC and putting it on top of AGC. They're opening up the App Store for us the user to generate units of AGC, right? These units right now are called GPTs. They'll then take our GPTs, give us some of the revenue share, and host and share these reusable units of UGC in the form of AGC, right? Our individual GPTs. Honestly, it's a brilliant move from a business perspective and it was bound to happen at some point. It's super clutch that OpenAI is making this happen. So let's talk about what that means for you, the engineer. So on the micro side, what's the best move for us? How can we not only stay relevant, but increase our capacity to deliver valuable products? Should you be spinning out GPTs? Should you be constantly hunting for the best GPTs? Or should you wait until the desk has settled before committing your precious time and energy? As most things in engineering, I think the answer is it depends, but I'm leaning more toward action here. If you're watching this video, you know about GPTs, maybe you've used open AI APIs, maybe you know about agents and multi-agent systems, you're ahead of the curve. I know it might not be apparent, but there's a huge chunk of engineers who are blatantly ignoring how useful generative AI is, or they just haven't taken the time. And you've probably heard about companies that are straight up banning the use of AI and open AI related technology. I can guarantee you they're going to pivot over the next couple of years, or they're going out of business. So you're in the right place. On the micro level, I think the best move is the following. Cut out an hour of time to find one or two GPTs you find useful. Get a good feel for it, figure out where the bounds are, see what it can do, see what it can't do, and then think about how would you improve it. Lastly, as you're going on about your day, writing code, building products, think about GPTs that you could use to accelerate your engineering. Try to find the GPT that you're thinking of, and if you can't, maybe it's time to start building a GPT of your own. It's important to reiterate the value proposition of GPTs, right? It really comes in three forms. Domain-specific custom knowledge bases. This is information you can feed your GPTs 
your assistant or your agent. We've done this on the channel via the Assistance API. Domain-specific language is what gives GPTs, and really, if you think about it, it's what makes all of us valuable, right? It's what we know that others don't, or it's skills we have that others don't have. The second form of value that GPT offers you is the message threads, right? It's the trailing context. It's the conversation that you've been having with it over time, right? It understands and can refer to the past in a decent enough way that makes it valuable. And then lastly, and this is the most important one, GPTs have the ability to take action, AKA make API requests. If there's anywhere I recommend on focusing, it's building hyper-specific custom APIs that do special unique things around your domain, around your product. So what exactly do I mean by that? Let me give you a specific example that I'm personally considering. So I'm working on a text to SQL to results application and the idea is simple. Stop wasting your time writing SQL. Let natural language queries do the hard work for us. You can do everything from simple lookup statements, simple selects in natural language, and then you can take that to the next level and in just a few words, make queries that would take you possibly hours to complete. This deceptively simple query average time between jobs is a lot of work. And you can see here, we wrote four words, and the SQL it generated did everything we needed to without any of the hassle, without any of the time, the headaches it takes to write SQL. I'm building this tool and I'm thinking about creating a GPT that wires up to your talk to your database desktop application that's gonna make queries on your behalf right from the GPT store. It'll update your desktop application in real time. It's gonna make queries, you know, right in the application as you're typing. It adds an additional conversational layer as a completely separate feature that also integrates really well with the core value proposition that the text to SQL to results application talk to your database is going to deliver. This is one way that I'm looking at GPTs, thinking about how can I create real valuable products with it? How can I integrate it into applications I'm building? You can think about the potential of GPTs as a percentage. I see API actions being long-term 80 to 90% of the true value of GPTs. The fact that they can connect to your system via APIs and do literally anything, I really see as the long-term value of GPTs. If you're interested, you can check out the prototype of Talk to Your Database, link in the description. And if you find it interesting, there's a crazy 50% deal on the agentic plan, on the upgrade plan, up until the 20th for the desktop application that's gonna launch at the end of the month. I'm really excited and committed to building the best text to SQL to results application to the desktop of developers who are writing SQL, burning up a ton of time. So what do you think about this macro and micro strategy? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. I think OpenAI is making some incredible strategic moves while giving ample opportunity to engineers to be a big part of the picture. Even with GPTs targeting everyone, I think it almost creates this reverse advantage for engineers to really build something different something really focused, something really unique. With all this, I recommend you lean toward action, toward experimentation, and look for those small to mid-sized ways that you can use GPTs to accelerate your engineering. I will admit that this takes time. You have to shift through some of the GPTs. You have to learn the GPT action API. That's something that I'm gonna be spending a decent amount of time on myself so that I can properly integrate them with Talk to Database and every application that I'm gonna be building next. I think it's a good bet in terms of where to spend your time. It's a good place to experiment. If it is going to be the next Apple Store, you wanna get in here early, right? You and I have a unique advantage of understanding this technology at a lower level where we can get in there, create value, and ship it. Maybe you missed the internet boom. Maybe you missed Facebook apps. Maybe you missed the social wave. Maybe you missed the app store, but you're here for the GPT store. Let's take advantage of this. Let's make sure we're exploring and experimenting at least 10 to 30% of our time and let's just see what can happen with these GPTs, right? The future is agentic applications and GPTs seem to be on a critical path toward discoverability of useful agents. They're also holding center stage in the platform where it seems like the future of AI agents and agentic software may live. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna stay on the edge of AI charged engineering, drop the like, drop the sub, and I'll see you in the next one.